Welcome to Spring Roll 45066, Part 1, a TV news magazine of Spring Roll, Ohio. In our May-June episode, we'll visit with Eric and Laura Lee Smith and get a tour of Smith's Auto Care's new location. Joe will announce the Summer Concerts Park music lineup, and Vicki and Allie talk about summer programs at the Spring Rule Library. We'll visit the schools to meet two winners of the Franklin B. Water Scholarship. David Thompson of Coughlin Y gives us a scoop on summer programming, and on Meet Your Neighbor, I talk to Spring Rule City Council member Carol Moore. It's all happening right now on Spring Rule 45066, Part 1. Carrie and I are coming at you live from the Spring Rule Community Room. We're here because we had to make a command decision. It's still cold outside and it's rainy and nobody wants to get sick. So Carrie, another show? Another what? show. Wish we were outside, but Mother Nature just did yeah. not want to cooperate. We, we have our colors, which we'll talk about later. Are ready to go? Red, white, and blue. Patriotic. Absolutely. We so where are we going day. first, there? We are going to Schmidt Auto Care. And you know, they just moved to a new location. We got a chance to talk to Eric, Laura Lee, and Emma about their business and something that you know I think is really neat is they don't just work on your automobiles they're actually starting a series of classes to teach local people you know how to take care of their car the one that's coming up this summer is how to change a tire and it's going to be actually you know it's they're not just going to show you they're going to make you do it so it's going to be participation it'd be great for you know new drivers someone like me that's never really changed a tire you know, it's really neat. So let's go check them out. Let's do it. All right, we are at Schmidt Auto Care today in their brand new location on Hiawatha Trail with Eric, Laura Lee, and Miss Emma Schmidt. Guys, thanks for having us into your new location today. Yeah, thank you for coming. for coming. So tell us a little bit for anybody who doesn't know about Schmidt Auto Care. What do you offer here? Uh, so we're a full service facility. Uh, we do everything from brakes uh, all the way up to uh, major repairs, engines, axles, stuff like that. Wonderful. And now your new location right here on Hiawatha Trail, mm -hmm. kind of across from OSA, Ohio Sports Academy, mm -hmm. if anybody's into landmarks. Tell us about the new shop. It's gorgeous. Yeah, so uh, we built this shop, uh, oh, four months ago or so, wow. uh, about 12,000 square foot. Wow. Uh, we have nine lifts, uh, an alignment rack, and then uh, all the amenities you need uh, for uh, our modern cars. Excellent, excellent. What makes Schmidt Auto Care different than, you know, the other guys around town? Uh, so one of the big things that we focus on is ethics, transparency, um, the honest repair. Uh, we want to inspect your car. We want to check everything for safety. I mean, let's be honest, who gets under their car? Sure, I don't. Um, <laughs> so uh, we have that opportunity during oil changes and, and regular repairs. And uh, so we uh, offer a full service inspection that is free of cost to you. Uh, anytime you come in for an oil change or any other service and uh, we can offer those uh, findings to you. Fantastic. And, and digitally. Yeah, yeah, we do it on a digital format as well, which is kind of new to us. Um, but it's something that our industry is starting to take hold with. Uh, we're probably one of the few independents that actually do that. Very and cool. uh, it's all digital. We can, we can email text uh, all our findings, pictures, and video off to you so you can go along with us as we're explaining. That's impressive. Yeah. That's wonderful. Now, Laura Lee, I know you're VP of Operations and Marketing. Tell us a little bit about you know what goes on on your side at Schmidt Auto Care. Ah, oh, I'm in all the social media, so you're actually talking to me on online. Okay. Um, I'm in our app and make sure it's consistent, um, so you can actually see all of your repairs, schedule all of your repairs and whatnot. <laughs> I take care of the website portion. Um, and all of the hiring, I'm always consistently looking for new faces to add as we expand and grow. Sure, sure. It's, it's nice to see women working in an auto shop. Yes, yes. Uh, so there's myself and actually Lauren, who right. um, was a technician for us. Yes. And then she told us she was going to have a baby. And so we moved her to the service advisor and she actually had her baby last night. So it's so. congratulations, Lauren. We've got a new little Schmidt Auto baby in the land yep. here. New That's technician on the rise. <laughs> Well, and I love your articles that you write for Springboro Neighbors Magazine. Yes. Uh, Eric and I both take turns um, writing those. I really gear mine more towards women in the industry, and he really gears his more towards the technical, like, guy stuff. Sure, sure. Sure. So tell me, you know, you guys have been in Springboro for many years now. Why is it important to keep your business here in Springboro? Uh, we really like the community. People are really good. Uh, we came from another community, which was great to us sure, as sure. we grew. Um, but uh, this community's really uh, welcomed us in with open arms. 
Wonderful. Well, we love having you here. Thank you for having us in your gorgeous shop. It's so clean in here you could eat off the floor. <laughs> it's astounding to me. But thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Great. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Back to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Eric, Laura Lee, and adorable Emma for having us into your business. That's a really cool shop. Absolutely. You know, May and June is exciting times, but as we work on our way towards July, Everybody keeps saying concerts in the park. Yes, concerts in the park. North Park you got concerts. Journey back, Mayor of Journey. Uh, well, yes, we do have Journey Back, and we have a lot of concerts in the park. We have nine of them this time, and our camera tech, Joe McKenzie, is going to tell you all about it. Coming at us June 21st at 7:30 p.m. We welcome the menus. On June 28th, 7:30 p.m. We welcome Queen Flash. On July 2nd, 7 p.m., we welcome the 122nd Army Reserve Band. And on July 5th, 7.30 p.m., it's Hotel California. Coming at us on July 9th, 7 p.m., we welcome the Pandora Effect. And on July 12th, 7.30 p.m., it's the Boy Band Review. July 16th, 7 p.m., this Pine Box. And on July 19th at 7.30 p.m., we welcome the McCartney Project. July 23rd at 7 p.m., it's the J. Clark Band. July 26th, 7.30 p.m., the long-awaited Journey Resurrection. And finally, on July 30th, 7 p.m., it's the Mad River Dogs. We hope to see everybody at the concerts in the park in Springboro 2019. That's North Park Amphitheater. Thanks for doing that, Joe. And we hope to see all of you at the park this year. Right, Carrie? Absolutely. Right. That's so fun. And it, it's a free event. Oh, I know. And wonderful. Going to the library? Yes, the lovely ladies at the Springboro Library. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Carrie, and greetings from your library. All children's, teens, and adults are invited to participate in the 2019 Summer Reading Program, A Universe of Stories, at the Franklin Springboro Public Library. Summer is a great time for all ages to discover new stories, reread favorite titles, explore new genres, and win prizes along the way. Children and teens are welcome to stop by the library starting Tuesday, May 28th to pick up reading logs. Adults can pick up an Appalachian puzzle sheet for a chance to win themed prizes related to the Smoky Mountain area. There are fun programs going on this summer at the library, and Allie's going to mention some of the kids' programs. Uh, join us Friday, May 31st for our Summer Reading Kickoff event, a space party. Local celebrity Mike Himmelgarn will entertain us Tuesday, June 11th. Children can meet several animal friends Tuesday, June 25th, when Animal Tales will be at the library. Songs and Stories will be the name of the game Tuesday, July 9th, when Joni Calum will share some sing-along fun with us. Our summer reading finale will be Friday, July 19th at Ohio Sports Academy. You can find details about each of these programs on our website, fspl.org. Teens have some exciting programs to choose from this summer as well. On Saturday, June 15th from 12 to 1.30 p.m., daughters and sons ages 11 to 18 are invited to bring your father to celebrate Father's Day with a camp in lunch. Food, snacks, and treats will be provided and we will be playing games. Registration is required. On Monday, June 24th, teens ages 11 to 18 are invited to come celebrate a universe of stories with a space-themed program. We will have crafts, snacks, and out-of-this-world fun. This is a drop-in program. On Tuesday, July 2nd, from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m., teens ages 11 to 18 are invited to play video games, board games, or instruments. Sandwiches, snacks, and drinks are provided, and registration is required. Allie's going to tell you more about the story times this summer. Summer story times will be in session from June 3rd to July 18th at the Springboro Library. We would love to have you join us. Baby time is Monday at 9.30 a.m. Toddlers have three times from which to choose. They are Monday at 10.30 and Thursday at 9.30 or 10.30 a.m. Preschool story times continue to be held on Mondays and Thursdays at 11.30 a.m. 
And don't forget that throughout the year, new children's books are purchased and kept on display in the children's area immediately to the right as you enter the front door of the library. Stop by to see what's new in the area of children's literature. As always, the most current information can be found on our website at www.fspl.org. We encourage you to check us out. Back to you. Hey, mm -hmm. ladies. Thank you very much. We love to get smart. We could use a little more of that, couldn't yeah, we? we? <laughs> could. Yeah, we could. Yeah, I know. Anyway, so we you got a nice clip coming up? Yeah, yeah. You know, we love our relationship with Springboro Schools, and, and, you know, we love kind of bringing the good news to our show. And we had the opportunity to sit down with two of the Franklin B. Walter Scholarship winners. And these are winners that were chosen, you know, through um, really all the schools in Warren County. Really neat to uh, talk to the students and then talk to one of the teachers that uh, was chosen as the subject of the essay. So we'll talk to Rory Corzin and a couple students. Yeah. It's a great story. All right. Mm -hmm. We are in Springboro High School today in the chemistry and physics classroom of Mr. Rory Corzin's. And we are talking to Zoe Hill and Evan Phillippe about their recent Franklin B. Walter Scholarship Award wins. Everybody, thank you for joining us today. Yeah. And Mr. Corzin, thank you for having us in your classroom. Oh, you're welcome. So let's start with Evan and Zoe. Guys, if you would, I know you're both seniors um, at Springboro High School and at the Career Center, although you are a Springboro student. Yes. So tell us a little bit about you know, the process, what you're studying, and you know, what this award means to you. Let's start with Zoe, ladies first. Um, so I am studying uh, graphic arts at the Warren County Career Center, as you said, and mm -hmm. I'm also a Springboro student. And um, this award is like very impactful in my life because obviously we all know college is expensive very. and around here it can be even more expensive. So it's a good step towards, you know, uh, commitment and going into tuition so I don't go into debt. So I understand. Evan, tell me a little bit about what it means to you. Okay, so this award also very important to me uh, for the same reason. It helps a lot with college. Uh, which, yes, again, is a very expensive uh, endeavor. And then it also just sort of helps to put a, punctua or a punctuation at the end of a high school career that is, it's been a lot of work, but it's been a lot of fun. Sure, sure. So if you would, Zoe, tell us a little bit about the process you went through, to, you know, from applying to, for the award, and then also how you were able to bring in uh, Kelly McGee, one of your favorite yeah. teachers. So, um, Guidance came into my class, and they, um, it was my, actually my English class, which is the class that Ms. McGee teaches, Sorry. and she said that um, my guidance counselor told us all that we should apply, because we're a pretty great group, mm -hmm. and um, so I applied from there. There was an essay that both me and Evan had to do, mm -hmm. and just basically listing out our college plans, why we want the award kind of thing, and um, then in a couple weeks, guidance came back, and they were like, hey, you got the award, and I was pretty excited about it, and then um, I chose Mrs. McGee. Do you want to yeah, no, please okay. go ahead. I chose Mrs. McGee because um, I'm going into the field of English and sure. also um, I wrote a novel over my senior year, so she was a big motivation, inspiration for that. That's wonderful. So part of this scholarship process was that you got to pick a teacher that was very influential mm -hmm. in your you know, high school career. Yeah. Wonderful. And you picked Kelly McGee mm -hmm. from the Career Center who couldn't join us today, but hi Kelly, we miss you. <laughs> You're doing a great job. So let's talk to Evan, who obviously picked Mr. Corzin. <laughs> Evan, tell us a little bit about you know, your process here. Okay, so my process was very similar. Uh, guidance office here at the high school called me, as well as a couple other peers, down to the guidance office to apply for the scholarship in a similar way. And like Zoe, I got a letter in the mail a couple of weeks later saying that I would, had been selected for the high school to attend the banquet in Lebanon. And then I chose Mr. Corzan because not only of his presence in the classroom as an amazing physics teacher, um, which is a hard subject to teach to high school students, sure. um, but also for his presence outside the classroom. He's so dedicated to his students and he makes us feel special. He makes us feel important. He's the That's teacher wonderful. who tells us, we're going to get to graduation. I'm going to get you to graduation. Mm -hmm. well, that's wonderful. Mr. Corzan, what does that mean You know, to have uh such an influence on, on Evan's life and ha and to be singled out by Evan. Well, it was pretty amazing. You know, I did show up and I wasn't exactly sure what was going to happen that day, so I was very surprised and of course very proud. I mean, these students are amazing and 
you know, we're excited that we're able to impact their lives, but they impact our lives in so many different ways too. So I think the whole process is special with them and then all the dedicated people who are around to recognize both teachers and these wonderful students. You know, I want to give a lot of you know, praise to them as well. It was a wonderful experience. Well, and, and the two of you are, are, are truly standouts. You know, each school in Warren County gets one winner. Springboro is actually being recognized twice because of our winner from Springboro High School being Evan and then our winner from the Career Center being Zoe. So great job, Springboro. That's exciting for us. Mr. Corzin, tell us a little bit about, you know, what you do with students and, you know, just it sounds like you, you're a little, you go above and beyond when it comes with your students in the classroom. Well, we, we have a lot of fun in here. Obviously, we have our days that are very stressful, so, but we try to make it a little bit better. You know, there's times we might meet at Dorothy Lane Market at night to just kind of go over questions when we have time to, and, and just other little things, you know, labs that we get to do and, and things like that make a really big difference, you know, to help students understand what's really going on. That's fantastic. It's obvious you, you do truly care about your students inside and outside of the classroom. Well, before we wrap up, Zoe, Evan, if you would, tell me about your plans uh, after graduation. Yeah, so I am, I just committed this week to go to the University of Dayton. Congratulations. I'm going to study, thank you, uh, communications, journalism. Great choice. Yeah. <laughs> um, I hope to, after college, maybe get my master's. And then um, I want to write novels. Um, I've written one this year, as I said, and I want to publish it and get more published and then work for digital media on the side. Wonderful. You've got it all planned out. Yeah, I <laughs> hope so. And Evan? Uh, yes, this fall I plan to attend the University of Alabama uh, where I will study biochemistry and science research and hopefully one day that will translate into a career as a neurologist. That's wonderful, wonderful. Well, Springboro is incredibly proud of all of you. Thank you for being wonderful representatives mm -hmm. of our community and uh, we can't wait to see what you do in the future. Thanks. Thank you. Back to you. Hmm? Those are some exceptional Springboro students, aren't they? Yes, they are, absolutely. You know, we, we talk about our schools and a lot of the amenities, but the YMCA is a big part of our community, too. Huge. So many people use it for so many different reasons, you know, physical, obviously, but spiritual and getting to know people. Yeah. I mean, doing it's great. a social place, too. It, it is. It's a great hangout to get mm -hmm. healthy. Anyway, David Thompson and his crew is standing by, going to give us the latest update at the Y. Hi, David. Welcome to the show. Thank you guys and welcome back to the Kaufman YMCA. My name is David Thompson and I'm the director of the Y and I'm thrilled to be able to tell you about some of the exciting summer programs that we have going on here at the YMCA. The first thing that I want to share with you is about our 7th and 8th grade memberships. These are free memberships for kids that are entering into 7th and 8th grade. And not only are these memberships good at the Kaufman YMCA, but they're good at any of our YMCA locations throughout the Dayton area. We've made it really simple for kids to come here to the Y to get involved. Just come into the YMCA, bring a parent or your guardian, and we can get you signed up immediately for this free summer membership that gives you access to the Y and everything that we have in the months of June, July, and August. So kids, Come and see us here at the YMCA. We'd love to get you involved. So the next thing I'd like to share with you is about our annual Strong Kids Triathlon. This is the 13th year that the YMCA of Greater Dayton has held our Strong Kids Triathlon. And this will be open to all kids ages 5 to 12 throughout the Dayton area where we'll be holding this triathlon at our Hubert Heights YMCA that is a part of the YMCA of Greater Dayton. Registration cost for members is $15, and the registration for non-members is $25. You can visit our website at www.daytonymca.org and look for the Strong Kids Triathlon page to learn more about all the details about this year's triathlon. It's a great time, and your kids will really enjoy it. The next thing that I, we'd like to focus on today is about swimming and for our kids to be safe when they're around rivers and lakes and pools throughout the summertime. So today we have brought in our aquatics director Sarah Terrell to tell us all about some of the swimming lessons and free programs for kids that we have here at the Kaufman Y. Sarah? Thanks David. The first thing I'd like to talk about is our safety around water week. It's June 30th through the 7th and it's free swim lessons for kindergartners through sixth graders. We have new this year morning and afternoon times. If you'd like to register, you can stop at our front desk or visit our website at DaytonYMCA.org. 
Also, we have tons of new swim lessons this summer. Um, we offer boot camp swim lessons as well as regular swim lessons, so please get your kids in and get them involved in swimming this summer. Our swim lessons are for six month old all the way up to adults and beginner levels all the way to swim team. If you'd like to get involved, please give us a call at the Y or visit our website, DaytonYMCA.org. Thanks for visiting us today at the Kaufman YMCA. Now back to you guys. It's always a pleasure, David, to have you on the show. Carrie and I do appreciate all we have from the YMCA. That time. It is. Part one, meet your neighbor. Before we go to Carol and hear her interview and that clip we got, just want to say thank you, Carol, for having the relationships with the hospitals and allowing them to give and donate a million dollars to make Casey Jane Park a reality. Mm -hmm. It would not have happened without your leadership, without all that great things with that family. Anyway, let's go see that clip, Carrie. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are at the 45066 Meet Your Neighbor segment, part one. And we have Carol Moore with us. Hi, Carol. Hi, Mayor. Thank glad you. To have, glad to have you here on the oh, show. Oh, I'm so excited I'm to be waiting, here. Waiting, waiting, waiting to have you on the show. So why don't you just tell the audience a little bit about yourself? I'm, I'm proud to be a Springboro resident. My husband and I, um, the late Bruce Moore, we moved to um, the area about 31 years ago, and we started a church. Um, it used to be the old Clear Creek Farm Market, and we bought 20 acres and started um, what used to be called New Life Worship Center, and then we changed it to Clear Creek Christian Assembly, and now it's got a new name, New Spring. So, Well, why don't you tell the audience uh, about your family life? Oh, absolutely. Well, um, Bruce and I were married for 28 years, and he passed away about two and a half years ago, but we raised two great kids. Um, Jordan, he graduated from Springboro in 20, uh, 2008, and then my daughter, Alyssa, she graduated in 2012. Now, what's Jordan doing now? Jordan is actually a pastor in Toledo. He's a, a young adults pastor. Um, he's married. He has a wife named Karen, and I have my first grandbaby named Clover. Oh, Thank you, Mayor. Right Thank you. I'm so proud of her. Yeah. Um, she's about 14 months old and um, can say, I love you, and she's oh, just wow. so precious. She's stolen my heart. Touches your heart. How about Alyssa? Alyssa, she's doing great. She works at Apple. Mm -hmm. um, she's got her bachelor's degree in biblical studies and communication and just working away and enjoying life. She's yeah. actually in Florida right now. You so. did good. Is she at your place down in Florida? She's down at my condo. Yeah, I've got a condo in Naples, and she loves that's to go down and visit. That's, that's so. a good thing. Well, you know what? You serve the community on city council. Why don't you tell the audience a little bit about your passion, because I know it. it Tell the audience about your passion and how you became a city council member. Absolutely. Well, my husband, um, Bruce Moore, he actually served on council for eight years and just loved the city. We both have loved the city and um, enjoyed I'm actually a realtor um, with Coldwell Banker, and I've been an associate partner with them and working with them for 15 years. So Spring is such a great place to live and raise a family. It's a great place to work. And um, Bruce and I came and started the church, and then he got on council. And um, when he passed, I knew how passionate he was about um, working for the city. And I just kind of wanted to um, carry on his legacy and, and um, just honor his, all the work that he did and his love and passion for the city. That's a, that's a good reason, and I know it came, comes from your heart. And it's original. Well, I, I mean, I love Springboro, and I love working here. I love living here. And it's it's fun to work for the city, and it's fun to put the city's best interest, you know, at first and, and to make it. And you know you work right down the street, and I see all the different listings and stuff that you do. You're yeah. knocking them dead. Yeah, it's it's been a good year. The inventory's low, so if you want to sell your house, it's a great time to do it. Well, why don't you tell the audience, because I hear it all the time, and they think, well, you marry your exaggerating. It, unless, unless there's something really wrong with your house, your house is gone in five days or less, it seems like, anymore. It, is that true? If it's actually, if it's priced right, if it's a great house and priced right, it'll probably sell the first day it goes on the market. Okay. Inventory's so low. Okay, so, there you yeah. go. Yeah, it's awesome. It's a great time to sell. And, and actually, because inventory's low, it's driving prices up. So if you're considering selling, it's an awesome time. Oh, good. Well, you know, we all work great as a team on council. Uh, we all have our own ideas and we share them. But uh, why don't you... Let the audience know before we close um, your own personal reasons why you think Springville is special and what can we do better, if anything. Well, I'm not sure what we could do better. I think we put our best foot forward in everything that we do. But Springboro, um, I think our crime is low. Um, our schools are great. Um, the housing market is great. Um, we have nice parks and, commu and community events. And, you know, we have North Park and we have all the different 
um, concerts and we have the new dog park and there's just every place that you go it's just a nice fun um, and really I think a first class environment to um, be able to raise a family and to be able just to live and enjoy. If you see this pretty lady out somewhere, come up, introduce yourself. Absolutely. She really cares about this community. Thanks for being on the show. Oh, thank, thank you, you, Mayor. It's care. been a blessing. Wait, thank bye. you. Bye bye. Thanks, Carol. Appreciate all you do for the community as a council member and all you've done along the way. Great lady. Well, another show, part one. Another show is. Don't done. go anywhere. Part two is right around the corner. Take us home, Mayor. Well, you know what? Well, we have so much to be thankful for in this wonderful country we live in, we all call home. And the red, white, and blue, as you can see, Carrie and I got it on. Uh, you know, we all love our country. We all love the flag that sits behind us. And there's a lot of people who are less fortunate right now. So, you know, keep them in your prayers. But if you see a veteran out there anywhere, whether it be a veteran who serves in any kind of war, any kind of branch of service, peacetime, wartime, it doesn't make any difference. Every veteran needs to be thanked. They made a tremendous contribution for our country. So as we approach Memorial Day and Flag Day, uh, keep all that in your prayers, and God bless America. We'll see you next show.